Welcome to New York's number two sports show. The Rangers beat the Blackhawks 4-1 to in Brennan Othman's NHL debut. And I thought he looked really good. Uh, didn't show up on the score sheet, but he was noticeable. And you know, I'm definitely excited to see what he's going to bring for however long he's up with the big club. He actually had five shots on goal, which is good. Uh, you know, and it's tough. Like, he's on a line with Benino and Brodzinski. I don't imagine he's going to get much power play time, um, if at all. I, I actually – did the Rangers' second power play unit even get a chance tonight? I'm not even sure if they did. So I'm not I – mean, maybe he would have. And, again, the Rangers were one for two on the power play. And one of them was coming off of a four-on-four. Four. Well, no, sorry. One of them – I think both of them actually were four-on-four four situations – uh, let's see. So the Rangers scored. Yeah. So one of them ended early. A black probably ended early and the Rangers scored a power play goal. And the other one, the Rangers had it for like 17 seconds before it ended. And the Rangers took a penalty. So we'll see if he gets second power play time. But anyway, this was Connor Bedard's uh, Madison, Square, uh, Madison Square Garden debut. And he's definitely going to be a very special player. The number one overall pick this year. He is really the one major bright spot for the Chicago Blackhawk team. This is not, you look at this roster and it's not very good. It just isn't. And, you know, it's going to take them a while, I think, to get back to where they were. Peter Morazic was in goal for Chicago. But yeah, just the, the yeah, this Blackhawk roster is just not really all that good. Uh, and the Rangers took advantage of that. The Rangers played very well. They, they, they really left no doubt in this game yeah, it was close for a bit, but they were really always in control, always had the lead. And this is what you're looking for. The Rangers are 10-1 and one following a loss. And so now the Rangers improve their overall record to 26-10-1, which is now tops the NHL. So uh, they leapfrog over the Boston Bruins, who lost tonight to the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. But yeah, the Rangers... Really, uh, as you'd expect, you know, a, a good bounce back effort against Chicago. So, first period, I, again, like for me, Rangers got off to a good start. Like it was a consistent, just good game for the Rangers. And there was um, no penalties in the first, but there was a goal. And it was scored by Artemi Panarin. His 24th goal of the season, assisted by Lafreniere and Trocek. That line was really good tonight. I think you could argue that those are probably the three best players uh, in this game. And Panarin scores against his former Chicago team. They announced tonight the initial rosters for the, NH, uh, for the NHL also game. Uh, in other words, it was one representative from each team. And we find out that Igor Shesterkin was named as the initial Ranger representative, which came as a surprise but then we found that after the game that Artemi Panarin will not be able to attend the All-Star game because uh, him and his wife will be having a second baby. So congrats to Artemi, but that makes a lot more sense. I'm sure that he would have been the initial representative, but uh, he had to decline. It, it is still a little bit weird that Igor would have been next in line, and maybe that was just for goaltender because, you know, he was – like. Maybe that could just be for a lack of goalies, goalie options. But Igor, who has been better lately, there's really no question about it. And Igor was good tonight. Uh, really is not worthy of making this year's All Star uh, team. But we'll see. Then, it, then it comes down to a fan vote, and I would expect, I would expect another Ranger to get in. Uh, Mika Zibanejad is the one that comes to mind, but we'll see. Um, but definitely. Um, you know, with, with Panarin, it makes sense why he was not selected. So Panarin gets that first goal for the Rangers. Uh, it was a really nice cross size pass from Lafreniere. So from right to left, Panarin with that quick shot, and it goes past Morazic, and the Rangers take a one thing lead. They take that one thing lead into the second period. And in the second, Adam Fox, who, again, like, there's been... Like, he is not at peak Adam Fox level. Just, I'm not sure what others feel about that, but I'm not saying he's been bad. 
but he just hasn't been quite what he was before he got hurt. And so Fox is called for interference. He interferes with Boris Kachuk. And the Rangers penalty kill does a nice job. And before that power play is over, Jimmy Vesey is interfered with by uh, Korchinski. And so that leads to a Ranger power play, and they score on it. And it's a goal by Chris Kreider. So Kreider scores his 20th goal of the season. It's a power play goal from Trocek and Sabanajad. And this was reviewed for a potential kick by Kreider, but they looked at the replay and they determined that it was not a distinct kicking motion. And so the Kreider goal counts and the Rangers take a 2 nothing lead. So I wasn't sure, honestly, when they showed it, I kind of thought maybe they would say that he did kick it in intentionally, but I actually think the right call was made. Like he, he kind of just crashed the net and it went off of his skate. Again, that said, like if I'm a Blackhawk fan or like if I'm a Ranger fan, like I, I could have seen it going the other way. But by the letter of the law, I actually do think they got it right. But we know how inconsistent these things can be. So the Rangers take a 2 nothing lead at that point. And from there, a bad sequence towards the end of the second period. Colin Blackwell, the former Ranger, scores his first goal of the season from Kachuk and Megna. So this was a play where a bad line change, but a bad change by the Rangers and Blackwell is able to get by Keandre Miller and makes a nice move past Shesterkin. So Blackwell, who, you know, was kind of a bright spot um, in the 2021 season. And then he was uh, selected by the Seattle Kraken uh, in the expansion draft from the Rangers. Blackwell, you know, I haven't really heard, like, he's kind of fallen off a bit. And he, look, he's a bit of a journeyman anyway, but he scores that goal there. And then next face off, so seven seconds after the goal, Keandre Miller trips him. So not a good sequence at all by Keandre Miller and Blackwell being the one uh, that really got it done for Chicago, really the only one in this game. But the Rangers penalty kill gets the job done. They kill that off and the Rangers have a 2-1 lead going into the third. And then the Rangers score a couple goals very quickly in the third period. Jacob Truba scores his third goal of the season from Panarin and Trocek. So... Just kind of somewhat of an innocent shot from the boards on the right side. And Truba uh, puts some elevation on it and he scores. So um, with that, give Panarin two points, a goal and an assist. And give Vincent Trocek three points, three assists in the night for Trocek. So his uh, brilliant season continues. And then just a minute and 10 seconds after, the Rangers extend their lead to 4-1. Jimmy Vesey scores his eighth goal of the season from Will Cooley and Braden Schneider. So really nice play by Cooley, you know, going in the zone with some speed, a little bit of a two-on-one, makes a nice pass from right to left, and is able to score past Morazic. So the Rangers take a 4-1 lead there. Um, then at 4 5 um, things get a little bit chippy, and it leads to a fight, a kind of an unlikely one. Blake Wheeler uh, gets into a fight with another former Ranger, Jared Tenorti. So Wheeler... Um, yeah, again, it was a little bit of a of a skirmish in front of the net. Tempers flare, and they start throwing punches. Uh, I would definitely say Snorty got the better of Wheeler, but I digress. Uh, so that happens. Then at 13-19, Jason Dickinson high six Ryan Lindgren, but that Ranger power play ends 17 seconds into it as Adam Fox trips Nick Foligno. But nothing else comes of it, and the Rangers win 4-1. So, you know, Igor wasn't, like, was good. Wasn't tested a whole lot. Made 21 saves on 22 shots. I really thought that that uh, Lafreniere, the uh, Panarin Trocheck Lafreniere line was really good. I thought Lafreniere what was excellent in this game. And you know maybe could it be because of an inferior opponent? I guess. But he was really good and probably deserved more than just that one assist he got on the Panarin goal. And again, and Brennan Othman, you know, for a debut, I thought looked noticeable and good. Uh, you want to see production again? I think that's going to be tough. I think it's going to be tough to come by when Nick Benino is your center. That's, you know, no offense to Benino, but at this stage in his career, he's not really going to provide a whole lot of offense. So um, now the Rangers will head to Montreal to take on the Canadians. Uh, this will be their one and only trip to Montreal this season. And the Canadians are coming off of, and this always concerns me a bit, they're coming off of a loss tonight. They lost 6-1 home against the Sabres. So 
And, and, and they generally haven't played well lately. They did have a surprise win earlier in the week um, at Dallas. And they followed it up tonight with a really bad performance against the Sabres. So the Rangers are definitely the better team, right? No doubt about that. But Montreal should be pretty hungry considering that they just lost in their home ice um, in pretty uh, lopsided fashion. I would expect Jonathan Quick to be in net. That would be my hunch. Then again, then again, let, let's put it this way. Quick, if not versus Montreal, I definitely think versus Vancouver. So Quick is definitely going to get one of the next two. Which one will it be? I, I know I said that last, going into this last one, so I may end up being wrong about that, but I don't think I'll be wrong about the fact that it'll be Quick in certainly one of these next two, probably versus Montreal, but I know he might have a good... I, he might have a good history versus Vancouver. Sometimes I feel like they like to get quick versus those Western Conference teams, and specifically teams that the Kings had faced had faced a lot. So um, I think that goes into, into their decision making. But the Rangers twenty six ten and one. You don't like what happened against Carolina. To me, like you can't forget about that and just say, "Hey, like Rangers won tonight. Everything's fine." Um, but the way they won this game just very convincing. No, didn't leave much doubt to it. And, um, and and again, that's just been a staple of this team that they have, uh, whenever things could go off the rails, they're able to stop that very quickly. So again, Connor Bedard's MSG debut, Brandon Offman's NHL debut, the Rangers defeat the Blackhawks 4-1.